It's Professor Dave. Let's look at alternating series. He knows a lot about all kinds of stuff. Professor Dave explains. We've examined arithmetic sequences and geometric series, so let's look at another type of series now. An alternating series is one in which the signs of the terms in the series alternate between positive and negative values. How can we produce a series like this? In order to produce an alternating series, there will usually be a term involved whereby the number negative 1 is raised to some exponent, like n or some term with n in it. For example, take the series negative 1 to the n minus 1 power, over n, from 1 to infinity. For the first term, we are raising negative 1 to the 0 power, which is 1. And then we divide by 1, so we just get 1. But then, for the second term, negative 1 is raised to the first power. So we leave the negative 1, divide by 2, and we get minus 1 half. For the third term, the negative 1 is squared to give positive 1, and we get 1 third. If we continue in this manner, we see how the number in the denominator increases by 1 each time, as expected. But because the term in the numerator alternates between positive and negative 1, the terms in the series alternate between positive and negative, all the way to infinity. So anytime you see a series and there is a negative 1 in parentheses being raised to the n power or something similar, you know that you are looking at an alternating series. Because of these alternating signs, it becomes trickier to assess whether the series will converge or diverge, but we can use something called the alternating series test. This test says the following. Let's say we have some series in the form of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times b sub n, which gives us b1 minus b2 plus b3 minus b4 and so forth, where b sub n is greater than 0. If b sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to b sub n, or in other words, if each term in the series is smaller than the last, disregarding sign, and also if the sequence b sub n goes to 0 in the limit of infinity, then the alternating series will be convergent. So for example, with that first series we looked at, we can pull the term in the numerator to the side, and b sub n is therefore represented by 1 over n. Each term in this series is smaller than the previous, and in the limit of infinity, 1 over n goes to 0. So both criteria are met, and this is indeed a convergent series. Let's apply this to a few series to make sure this sinks in. Take this one that is the same as our previous example, except with root n in the denominator. Does each term in this series get smaller? As n increases, its square root increases, so the fraction gets smaller as we go. And in the limit of infinity, this term does become 0. Both criteria are met, and this sequence converges. What about this one? Negative 1 to the n times the quantity 3n minus 1 over the quantity 2n plus 1. Here, does each term get smaller? Well, we have a larger multiple of n on top. As n gets very large, the plus and minus 1 terms will be negligible, and we just have the numerator getting increasingly larger than the denominator. The terms are therefore not getting smaller, and in this case, that means that the series is divergent. How about this one, with negative 1 to the n plus 1 times n squared over the quantity n cubed plus 4? As we might have realized by now, the slight discrepancies in the exponent associated with negative 1 are not really relevant, so let's look at the rest. With a higher power of n in the denominator, we can be sure that each term in the series is getting smaller. Does it go to 0 in the limit of infinity? Well, just plugging in infinity, we get infinity over infinity. So let's divide top and bottom by n squared. 
That gives us 1 over the quantity n plus 4 over n squared. Now, plugging in infinity, we get 1 over the quantity infinity plus 0, or 1 over infinity, which is 0. Both criteria are met, and this series converges. Let's do just one more, negative 1 to the n times n over the natural log of n. Do the terms increase or decrease? Well, the natural log of n will always be smaller than n, and it will increase at a slower rate than n does, as we can see by plugging in a few values for n. So the terms are increasing, and this series is divergent. So now we know how to look at alternating series and test for convergence, but we must now describe two different types of convergence. Let's say we have some series, a sub n, from 1 to infinity. Now let's take the absolute value of that series, which means we are taking the absolute value of every term in that series. If a sub n is convergent, and the absolute value of a sub n is also convergent, then that series is called absolutely convergent. Taking negative 1 to the n minus 1 over n squared, we said that this series was convergent. Now let's take the absolute value of this series. This means that whenever the negative 1 gives us a negative value for a particular term in the series, we just make it positive instead. So rather than an alternating series, we just get a regular p-series with a p-value of 2, as though the negative 1 term was not present. We know that this series is also convergent for reasons discussed in the previous tutorial. Since they are both convergent, then the original series is absolutely convergent. On the other hand, let's modify this slightly and take away the exponent in the denominator, leaving simply n. That will give us a different alternating series, which we know is also convergent. However, when we take the absolute value of this series, which turns all the terms positive, we get another p-series, but this time with a p-value of 1. Any p-series with a p-value of 1 or less will be divergent, and so we say that the original series is conditionally convergent. This is different from being absolutely convergent because taking its absolute value produces a series that is divergent. There is a test that is helpful in determining whether a series is absolutely convergent, and it is called the ratio test. We can place a sub n plus 1 over a sub n to form a ratio and take the absolute value. Then we take the limit of this ratio as n approaches infinity. This limit will equal L. If L is less than 1, then the series a sub n is absolutely convergent. If L is greater than 1, the series is divergent. And if the limit equals 1, the ratio test is not useful and it can't tell us any information about the series. Let's try one example that requires this ratio test. How about the series n to the n power over n factorial? We need to get the ratio of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. For a sub n plus 1, we just put n plus 1 wherever n was, so we get the quantity n plus 1 raised to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1 factorial. Then we divide that by the original series, n to the n over n factorial, and we take the absolute value of all that. But everything is positive, so the brackets just go away. Now, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, so let's flip this denominator and bring it up here. Looking at all this, we should be able to cancel some things if we get clever. For one thing, we have n plus 1 factorial, as well as n factorial. Well, we know that n plus 1 factorial will be n plus 1 times n times n minus 1, and so forth. So really, we can just say that this is equal to n plus 1 times n factorial, since the rest of this is just n factorial anyway. 
Then on the top, raising this binomial to the n plus 1 power is the same as n plus 1 to the n power times n plus 1 to the first power. This is just using a property of exponents in reverse. Now things look pretty good. We can cancel out an n plus 1 from top and bottom, and we can do the same with n factorial, leaving us with n plus 1 to the n power over n to the n. Since these have the same exponent, let's pull it out here to get n plus 1 over n, all to the n power. We just have to be clever one more time and divide through by n to get 1 plus 1 over n and recognize that this is actually equivalent to e, as was described earlier in the series. e, or Euler's number, is around 2.72, and that is greater than 1, so according to the ratio test, this series must be divergent. Now that we know about alternating series and how to test them for convergence, let's check comprehension. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, professordaveexplains at gmail.com.